Do you lie awake at night and think about all of the things you haven't accomplished and how, in all likelihood, you're never going to get around to achieving your dreams, and you're going to let that regret poison your soul and drag you into a dark abyss of self-loathing and depression until you succumb to life's inevitable end? Me neither, because I just watched the magic that is Jurassic Park, and let me tell you, I was feeling a little glum, so I wanted to watch something that was uplifting, magical and joyous. Look, if you're one of the three people who haven't seen Jurassic Park, let me just tell you, it's a must watch, obviously. And to those of us who grew up with this movie, I want you to watch it again, but with fresh eyes. Where we're going, we won't need eyes to see. There's a reason Spielberg is held as one of the true masters of capturing the magic of the silver screen. He understands how to articulate that awe and childlike sense of wonder that spectacle can provide. I mean, look at that. That's just it. That's it right there, isn't it? This movie made me feel like a kid again. Like I was watching some old classics from my childhood. Just a good old Spielberg time. I think I may have mixed in some of the wrong clips there. I think I may have revisited a part of my childhood I didn't want to go back to. Anyway, that's not to say Jurassic Park isn't without its flaws. It is great, but there are plenty of holes to poke in this film, like Richard Attenborough's amazing Scottish accent. Oh, I can see the fleas, mummy, can't you see the fleas? Clown fleas and high wire fleas and... Freedom! <laughs> Another common complaint is the two-dimensional characters. Take Alan Grant, for example. He dislikes children, he's forced to be with the children, he's a good man so he won't abandon the children, he loses his temper and shoots the children. It's a simple character arc, but Spielberg is able to pace it so well that all of the beats hit for maximum impact. For Alan Grant, spending time with children is a living nightmare. She said I should ride with you because it'll be good for you. Oh! But because Dr. Grant is a good man, he will do the right thing. He loves us! He loves us! But that's not what I'm gonna do. And after the excellent midpoint of this film, the T-Rex escape and then the car in the tree scenes, this moment of respite for Dr. Grant and the children feels earned, and goddamn if it doesn't make me feel all warm inside. What makes this moment have a maximum impact is that the tension of the action and the tension of Dr. Grant's inner conflict of not wanting to be around or perhaps not wanting children of his own both share their moments of resolution together. Alan? Yeah? What if the dinosaurs come back while we're all asleep? Huh. I'll stay awake. All night? All night. It's just great storytelling, really well paced stuff. Spielberg really gets that cozy, happy family feeling just right, you know? It's really heartwarming stuff. <laughs> See what I did there? Pretty good, pretty good. One thing that clicked in my mind whilst re-watching Jurassic Park was just how much of this film was used to establish the characters, the world, the feeling, uh, and the themes. This film kicks into overdrive at the halfway point. Literally, the exact halfway point is 1 hour, 3 minutes, 14 seconds, and 11 frames. And this is the exact frame, a little hot boy T-Rex. This is dead centre of the movie. And as far as narrative midpoints go, it's one of the best in all of cinema, hands down. Boy, my head being right all the time. 
You see, Spielberg spares no expense in setting up the narrative and building anticipation. Spared no expense. You have the initial hook. With the shooter scene. Shooter! Good impression. It's pretty good. Pretty spot on impression. Shooter! See? You got it. Just right. Shooter! Perfect. Perfect. I could even do like a voiceover of my own. Like, shooter! Straight away in the beginning of the film, we've established a promise for excitement for later on in the movie. And secondly, a clear understanding of the dangers has been established with these little raptor boys. No expense. And next, the film shifts gears to give the audience a sense of wonder and awe. And I'm talking about the big scene. You know, that part where you all go, whoa, it's pretty cool, it's a dinosaur, it's pretty good. Cool. It's a dinosaur. Uh -huh. Spared no expense. It does this for about 50 minutes or so, building characters, awe, feeling, but all the while, the promise of excitement and danger are constantly being seeded. But these are aggressive living things that have no idea what century they're in, and they'll defend themselves violently if necessary. We spared no expense. The film takes its time, and it is stuffed with very simple setups that give the audience the aha moments when they pay off. For example, Listen, if there's one thing the history of evolution has taught us, it's that life will not be contained. Life breaks free, it expands to new territories, and it crashes through barriers painfully, maybe even dangerously, but... Uh, you're implying that a group composed entirely of female animals will breed? No, I'm, I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. Do they show intelligence? With the brain cavity, they show extreme intelligence. Even problem solving intelligence. Especially the big one. You sure the third one's contained? Yes. Unless they figure out how to open doors. When she looks at you, you can see she's working things out. That's when the attack comes, not from the front, but from the side. And the other two raptors, you didn't even know were there. Well, we clocked the T-Rex at 32 miles an hour. T-Rex? Mm-hmm. You said you've got to do it. Spared no expense. I really like the T-Rex one, just that little line gets me every time, because it's these tiny little details that help with suspending your disbelief. So in closing, Spielberg is a master of capturing the magic of movies, and his finest works have you easily escaping into those cinematic worlds, because the craft is so meticulously hidden in your subconscious with all these great placements of setups and payoffs, it's excellent stuff. So if you're like me, and you need constant sources of escapism to drown out the horror of being alive in a world that is growing ever colder and indifferent, where your critical thinking is dulling and the passions you have are dying in a dream you'll never be able to achieve, then perhaps you should crack on Jurassic Park and have a good old time. Okay, bye now.